Now, the coming decade is bringing with it a privatized space race. Listen to these numbers. 990 satellites, 990, are expected to be launched every single year. That's almost three satellites every day. It's a great achievement for science, but at what cost? These satellites will one day become space junk. They could damage the International Space Station or fall down to Earth. But what if satellites could be sustainable too? What if they could break up without leaving any debris behind? A Japanese company is thinking along these lines and the material they've chosen might come as a surprise. There was a time when space launches were milestones, a time when there were watching parties for liftoffs. But today, that magic is gone. There seems to be a launch every week, and this comes at a steep cost. Space debris. Humans first reached space in 1961, but we haven't been the tidiest of visitors. There are 21,000 pieces of space debris larger than a softball, and 500,000 pieces larger than a marble. These could easily damage a satellite, or worse, fall down to Earth. Most satellites break up on re-entry, but sometimes small parts remain embedded in the orbit. They survive the re-entry. The key is to find a material that won't, one that will completely burn up before reaching the surface. A Japanese company, Sumitomo Forestry, reckons the answer has been with us for centuries. Wood. On paper, it's the perfect solution. Wooden satellites would completely burn up on re-entry. They wouldn't leave any debris behind. But the question is, can wood survive space? The intense radiations, the vacuum, and most importantly, the extreme temperature changes. The oak tree in your neighborhood probably couldn't, but Sumitomo claims to have a secret up its sleeve. An R&D secret that will help wood flourish in space. And conventional designs won't work here. The satellite will have to endure three times the force of gravity. The target is to launch the world's first wooden satellite in 2023. It's a tall task in itself, but an even bigger challenge is getting others to follow suit. There are dozens of active space organizations, all of them eager to establish their primacy. This privatized space race is creating a galactic dumpyard. Elon Musk's SpaceX has so far launched 900 Starlink satellites. He plans to deploy thousands more in the coming decade. Amazon's Kuiper project will send 3,200 satellites into orbit. The two companies are battling for broadband supremacy. In the process, they are adding to the junk. There are nearly 6,000 satellites orbiting the Earth. 60% of them aren't even working. Wood may or may not be the answer to this problem, but it needs an urgent fix. In 2006, a piece of space debris collided with the space station. It chipped a small part of the reinforced window. Thankfully, it was a tiny piece. There are far bigger ones floating around. Earlier this year, an 18-ton Chinese rocket splashed into the Atlantic. Its trajectory took it over Los Angeles and New York, putting thousands of lives at risk. At the current rate of space launches, this problem is set to get bigger. The last century was all about exploring space. Today, we have explored it, researched it, and are very close to thrashing it. Viewer Report, we own. World is one. Weon is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.